A warm welcome to you all for our online Eucharist for this, the 14th Sunday after Trinity, coming from St Michael and All Angels in Sopley. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And our prayers of penitence, where we come into God's presence and ask his forgiveness for the wrong that we have done. God so loved the world that he gave his only son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven and to bring us to eternal life. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolved to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour, in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in life eternal through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And the Gloria. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High. Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And the collect for this day, the 14th Sunday after Trinity, let us pray. Almighty God, whose only Son has opened for us a new and living way into your presence, give us pure hearts and steadfast wills, to worship you in spirit and in truth, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We now hear our first two readings. A reading from the book of Genesis. Realising that their father was dead, Joseph's brothers said, What if Joseph still bears a grudge against us and pays us back in full for all the wrong that we did to him? So they approached Joseph, saying, Your father gave this instruction before he died. Say to Joseph, I beg you, forgive the crime of your brothers and the wrong they did in harming you. Now, therefore, Please forgive the crimes of the servants of the God of your father. Joseph wept when they spoke to him. Then his brothers also wept, fell down before him and said, We are here as your slaves. But Joseph said to them, Do not be afraid. Am I in the place of God? Even though you intended to do harm to me, God intended it for good in order to preserve a numerous people, as he is doing today. So have no fear. I myself will provide for you and for your little ones. 
In this way, he reassured them, speaking kindly to them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from Romans 14. Accept him whose faith is weak, without passing judgment on disputable matters. One man's faith allows him to eat everything, but another man's, whose faith is weak, eats only vegetables. The man who eats everything must not look down on him who does not, and the man who does not eat everything must not condemn the man who does, for God has accepted him. Who are you to judge someone else's servant? To his own master he stands or falls, and he will stand for the Lord is able to make him stand. One man considers one day more sacred than another. Another man cons considers every day alike. Each one should fully be convinced in his own mind. He who regards one day as special does so to the Lord. He who eats meat eats to the Lord, for he gives thanks to God. And he who abstains does so to the Lord and gives thanks to God. For none of us lives to himself alone, and none of us dies to himself alone. If we live, we live to the Lord, and if we die, we die to the Lord. So whether we live or die, we belong to the Lord. For this very reason, Christ died and returned to life, so that he might be the Lord of both the dead and the living. You then, why do you judge your brother? Or why do you look down on your brother? For we will all stand before God's judgment seat. It is written, Surely as I live, says the Lord, every knee will bow before me, every tongue will confess to God. This is the word of the Lord. And today's Gospel reading. Alleluia, alleluia. Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. You have the words of eternal life. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Matthew chapter 18, verses 21 to 35. Peter came and said to Jesus, Lord, if another member of the church sins against me, how often should I forgive? As many as seven times. Jesus said to him, not seven times, but I tell you, 77 times. For this reason, the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who wished to settle accounts with his slaves. When he began the reckoning, one who owed him 10,000 talents was brought to him. And as he could not pay, his Lord ordered him to be sold, together with his wife and children, and all his possessions, and payments to be made. So the slave fell on his knees before him, saying, Have patience with me, and I will pay you everything. And out of pity for him, the Lord of that slave released him, and forgave him the debt. But that same slave, as he went out, came upon one of his fellow slaves, who owed him a hundred denarii, and seizing him by the throat, he said, Pay what you owe. Then his fellow slave fell down and pleaded with him, Have patience with me, and I will pay you. But he refused. Then he went and threw him into prison, until he would pay the debt. When his fellow slaves saw what had happened, they were greatly distressed, and they went and reported to their lord, all that had taken place. Then his Lord summoned him and said to him, You wicked slave, I forgave you all that debt because you pleaded with me. Should you not have had mercy on your fellow slave as I had mercy on you? And in anger his Lord handed him over to be tortured until he would pay his entire debt. So my heavenly Father will also do to every one of you if you do not forgive your brother 
or sister with your heart. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. There is much talk in church circles about vision. Leaders are encouraged to imagine some glorious future where churches are full, worship is vibrant and relevant, and people are excited about their faith and dead keen to share it with others. Of course, then along comes COVID-19 and we all wonder what the future may hold. Our first reading today is about vision. Joseph lived a life built around a vision, more specifically a dream. Earlier in Genesis, we read that Joseph dreamed that he and his brothers were in the field binding sheaves and that the sheaves of the brothers gathered and around the sheaves he had gathered and their sheaves began to bow down and worship his. His dream continued with other images of his brothers bowing to him, the sun, the moon and the stars, i.e. his brothers, paying him homage. Now, if you're going to dream, this is the kind of dream you want to have, isn't it? It has all the right stuff. It speaks of prosperity, of increase, of abundance, authority, respect, and lots more besides. All the sorts of things we probably would like for ourselves. However, Joseph soon learns that the dream or the vision is simply the vehicle. There's still the small matter of arriving at the destination. Now, there are a great many pages and verses between Joseph's dream and this family reunion. Perhaps the easiest way to cover this is to say that whenever God gives you a dream and a destiny, there's always one other D to consider. That's the D of drama. Joseph experienced his fair share of drama from the pit to the prison to the palace. And it all began at the hands of his brothers who hurt him but now find themselves in a very awkward position of needing him because they're starving. Then in the Romans reading, the Apostle Paul gives us a lesson in hospitality, that we should be ready to extend hospitality to others. Our world, like the church in Rome, is operating under the same system of the weak and the strong. Others are excluded, shunned and at times silenced. The wealthy and the educated, regardless of their faith, tend to look down on the uneducated, the poor and those living in the so-called global south. We see this in how some people talk about refugees, for instance. Yet Paul's appeal is for people to live in a Trinitarian manner by honouring and appreciating the humanity that we find in each other. Then in today's gospel, we find Jesus talking about forgiveness, which isn't easy, especially if you're told to forgive. Just think about the times when somebody has been really hurtful towards us. Forgiveness is rarely easy. Peter asked Jesus how many times he should forgive someone and then offers to do so seven times. An answer that both more than satisfies the Jewish law and feels to most of us pretty generous. Jesus then comes back with, and here it varies by translation, 77, 7 times 7, 70 times 7. I think it hardly matters how you translate it because no matter how you look at it, it's an awful lot of times to forgive the same person for sinning against you. Then Jesus tells a parable about forgiveness. The parable turns on just how much one person is forgiven and how little that same person is asked to and refuses to forgive. And this time the translation from ancient currency to modern matters in order to draw out Jesus' point. A talent was about 58 kilograms of silver and would take a labourer about 15 years to earn, which means that the servant owed the king about 150,000 years of labour. He would never ever be able to pay this debt back. A denarius, by comparison, was worth about a day's wage, which meant that the second servant 
owed the first about a hundred days of labour. Still a pretty big debt, but still. And everyone who hears this parable gets it. How could he possibly not overlook that minor debt when he'd just been forgiven an impossibly huge one? Jesus warns that we too must forgive others or face the consequences. Could I forgive like that? I'm not sure, but I don't have to. That's not really what Jesus is asking. I don't have to identify with the king in this story, but I can identify with the servant with a massive debt who's just been forgiven so, so much. Which means that my first job isn't to assume or insist that I must forgive vast debts, but simply to bask in the unbelievable forgiveness, acceptance and grace that I have experienced and try as much as I can to live out of that. The failure of the first servant isn't simply that he won't forgive, but he's just experienced an utterly unexpected, completely beyond his wildest dreams, life-changing moment of grace and seems absolutely and completely untouched by it. His whole life changed and he didn't even notice. Righteousness is not God's expectation, but instead is God's gift. Sometimes people speak of being right with God, but that's not our responsibility. It's up to God to put us right. And when we realise that forgiveness is not primarily God's expectation, but rather God's gift, we sink into that mercy and grace and find ourselves more able to turn in mercy and grace towards others. Well, at least I hope so. I still wonder, though, if there isn't some hidden obligation to forgive or even accept God's forgiveness sufficiently. Perhaps I should return to the act of the king and simply marvel that such forgiveness is even possible. Even when such forgiveness doesn't seem possible for me, because yes, forgiveness can still be hard, really hard, then I'm still confronted by the fact that it's possible for God. Whether I realise it or not, my struggle to forgive, my inability to live in grace, is not the only possibility. There are other ways. Forgiveness, whether God's or ours, interrupts that sort of endless cycle of cause and effect. An eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth and so on. That sort of rhythm of the world. The very possibility of forgiveness creates even more possibility. Things do not always have to be the way they are. And I find that comforting. I find it uplifting and it's very empowering. There is forgiveness. It frees us. It heals us and means that we can forgive others, even and especially when our own efforts fall short. God's mercy is way beyond our imagining. That's a truth proclaimed by the parable as well as by the testimony of Jesus' own life and ministry. On the night when Judas will betray him and Peter and the other disciples will abandon him, Jesus announces to all, this is the blood of the new covenant which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. Well, that certainly makes me think, and that's surely the vision we need to face whatever the future may hold for us all. The Creed. We believe in God the Father, God Almighty by whose plan earth and heaven sprang to being, all created things began. We believe in Christ the Saviour, Son of God in human frame, Virgin born, the child of Mary, upon whom the Spirit came. Christ, who on the cross forsaken, like a lamb to slaughter led, suffered under Pontius Pilate, he descended to the dead. We believe in Jesus risen, heaven's King to rule and reign, to the Father's side ascended, till as judge he comes again. 
We believe in God the Spirit, in one church below above, saints of God in one communion, one in holiness and love. So by faith our sins forgiven, Christ our Saviour, Lord and Friend, we shall rise with him in glory to the life that knows no end. So let us pray. Holy Spirit, open our hearts in prayer to our loving Father. We pray for our church as coronavirus restrictions change around us. Help us to watch for the perhaps hidden opportunities you are offering us. We remember all those suffering for their beliefs. Lord, Bless them and keep them safe. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our time in this world, that we may not fritter our lives away on petty human concerns, but in praising and serving you, our Creator. When we despair of the senseless damage being done to our environments, lift us up to action, however small, for all things are possible in your name. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all nations that our leaders might look up from their own political concerns and work together for the common good. We pray too for your justice and protection for all who uphold the law. Give courage to those standing up to the powerful and keep us open to ways we can stand alongside them. We ask your blessing too on all prisoners, that they might acknowledge their mistakes and seek a better future. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the most vulnerable, those who are ill and all who care for them, the lonely, the homeless and the hungry, those who are worried about the future, and for Nazanin Zagari Ratcliffe facing new charges today. In this benefice, we pray by name for Avril, Claire, Matthew, Steve, and Debbie Plowright. Maureen and Colin Stock, Susanna Fletcher, Jude, Michael Arnold, Maz, Chloe, Mandy Parker, Ken Randall, Vernon, Joe, May and her family, Peter Sherratt, Ben, Matthew and Rosie. 
also for Jill and John Neal, Margaret Creighton, Doreen Rendell, Toby, Daphne, Lorraine Perdue, Christine, Georgina, Adrian Young, Bill Maver, Patricia, Peter's mum, Becky, Braden, Charlotte Dunhill, Kate White, Anne Ram, and Tony Maidment. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we think of the family and friends whose presence we miss. And today we especially remember Lloyd Street and Alma Joy Savage. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we give you thanks for compassion towards us, redeeming us from sin. Give us patience and faith in your kingdom to come. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. and the peace. Christ is our peace. He has reconciled us to God in one body by the cross. We meet in his name and share his peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. So let's offer God's peace to those around us at this moment, to those in our hearts and minds, to our family, our friends, fellow church members. And a prayer at the preparation of the table. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness we have this bread to set before you, which earth has given and human hands have made to become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God for ever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness we have this wine to set before you fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us the cup of salvation. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice we offer for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his church. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, it is our duty and our joy, at all times and in all places, to give you thanks and praise, Holy Father, Heavenly King, Almighty and Eternal God, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. For he is your living word. Through him you have created all things from the beginning and formed us in your own image. Through him you have freed us from a slavery of sin, giving him to be born of a woman and to die upon the cross. You raised him from the dead and exalted him to your right hand on high. Through him you have sent upon us your holy and life-giving spirit, and made us a people for your own possession. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name 
forever praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Accept our praises, Heavenly Father, through your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. And as we follow his example and obey his command, grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us his body and his blood. Who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Therefore, Heavenly Father, we remember his offering of himself made once for all upon the cross. We proclaim his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension. We look for the coming of your kingdom. And with this bread and this cup, we make the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Lord. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Accept through him, our great high priest, this our sacrifice of thanks and praise. And as we eat and drink these holy gifts, in the presence of your divine majesty, renew us by your spirit, inspire us with your love, and unite us in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Through him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty, with songs of everlasting praise. Blessing and honour and glory and power be yours for ever and ever. Amen. Let us then pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, Redeemer of the world, give us your peace. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. This is the table, not of the church, but of the Lord. It is made ready for those who love him and who want to love him more. So come, you who have, been, have much faith, and you who have little, you who have been here often, 
And you who've not been here for a long time, perhaps physically never. And who have tried to follow, and you have failed. Come, not because I invite you, it is our Lord, it is his will that those who want him should meet him here. And a post-communion prayer of today. Lord God, the source of truth and love, keep us faithful to the apostles' teaching and fellowship, united in prayer and the breaking of bread, and one in joy and simplicity of heart, in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ, through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. The Lord be with you. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. <laughs>